imagine that you enter a parlor. You come late. When you arrive, others have long preceded you, and they are engaged in a heated discussion. A discussion too heated for them to pause and tell you exactly what it is about. In fact, the discussion had already begun long before any of them got there, so no one present is qualified to retrace all the steps that had gone before. You listen for a while, until you decide that you have caught the tenor of the argument. Then, you put in your oar. Someone answers. You answer him. Another comes to your defense. Another aligns himself against you. However, the discussion is interminable. The hour grows late. You must depart. And you do depart, with the discussion still vigorously in progress. Kenneth Burke's parlor metaphor is suggestive of a student writer's entrance into an academic discussion. In the metaphor, a person is joining a conversation that's already in progress, and they don't have much previous knowledge about the subject at hand. Similarly, your white paper is an addition to a long chain of discussion, and thus, you have to learn more about that pre-existing dialogue before you can respond to it. You are not expected to learn every aspect, but through your research, you should be familiarizing yourself with the discussion. It is important that you acquire not only background information, but also that you get to know the opinions that others are expressing. These opinions can help you come to form your own unique stance on the matter at hand. Once you have a pretty good feel for the pre-existing dialogue, then you can join in the conversation through the lens of your own paper. In your white paper, you will not need to respond to every opinion and bit of information that you come across, just the ones that you find most thought-provoking. You also do not need to try to end the discussion. Remember that in the metaphor, the discussion was happening before you arrived, and it will continue after you leave. You just contribute to it while you are there or here in RC 2001. In other words, your white paper should be an informed, thoughtful, measured contribution to the pre-existing dialogue about your particular topic. To learn more about that dialogue, it can be helpful to speak with someone who's already a participant in the conversation. If you have access to such a person, I welcome you to interview them for your white paper. It is understandable to me that you likely cannot schedule and conduct an interview for project deposit number three, but you could, in that deposit, let me know who you are trying to connect with and why they are a credible and appropriate source for your project. The richest learning experience probably would come from a face-to-face on-the-job interview, but these can be time-consuming. So, while I encourage in-person interactions, I also realize that you may need to conduct a phone or an email interview. My bottom line expectation for interviews conducted for this class is that you be very respectful of your interviewee. This professional will be giving you their time and expertise and you in return should be accommodating of their schedule, not the other way around, and expressive of your thanks. If you are going to book an interview for your white paper, be very clear about what you want when making the appointment. Say who you are, what your research is about, what the interview will be about, and why you think they are a good fit for your paper. Also, ask for a specific amount of time, 20 to 30 minutes is reasonable, and let the interviewee choose when and where you will meet, possibly from a list of options that you offer. On the day of the interview, you would, of course, arrive on time, looking nice, and ready to go with prepared questions. Obviously, yes-no questions get yes-no responses, so your inquiry would be of a tell-me-about nature. And even though you prepare in advance, at the end of the day, an interview is a conversation, so you would go into it aware that you may need to ask follow-up questions in the moment, and that with five minutes to go, you should start wrapping things up, even if this means some of your questions go left unanswered. Afterward, I feel pretty strongly that you should send your interviewee a thank you email, 
and also thinking in terms of networking and building positive professional connections, I believe that you should send them a copy of your white paper when it is done. We also need to touch on searching for news articles and editorial features. The go-to, I think, is to Google your topic and a particular news site. So in this first example, opioid crisis, searched as a phrase, big pharma, searched as a phrase, colon, in, the Daily Caller, which is a publication that's pretty far to the right. Uh, and I would say we have some success. In this second example, we will try music therapy as a phrase with the word prison, colon, so again, in The Guardian, which is a left of center publication. And it would seem that we have some success, uh, albeit an article that's a little bit dated, as we can see from the defunct video. So not vetoing this at all, it's from 2008, but if we did want to adjust our window of time, uh, I could click on tools and then select a time range. So perhaps I want to look for articles from the past year. Uh, and if at first glance this doesn't seem really promising, I can adjust. Uh, perhaps creating a custom range to represent the past five years. So from 2013 to 2018 to the present, and try again. Um, and just to point out, you will get uh, other kinds of features besides news articles. So here I see a scholarly article, actually, um, I think this is a thesis from the University of Iowa. Um, this doesn't necessarily fulfill the project deposit, which is due tomorrow, uh, but this certainly is a source that could be filed away for a later date. As a third example, I will try the words dementia, exercise, in NPR, and it would seem I have a number of features to choose from, even at just first glance. Um, since NPR stands for National Public Radio, here I may be getting both news articles and podcasts. And so in terms of your white paper, uh, this could count as either. As my final example, I will try machine learning as a phrase with the words bias, discrimination in the BBC which is the least biased news source I have mentioned so far. And I, again, feel like this is a pretty productive search. I want to draw your attention to this first uh, hit uh, because it is a blog, which of course is much more of an opinion piece than it is a news article. So it would count as an editorial. Uh, and of course, if this were an article that you were interested in adding to your white paper, you would want to track down the credibility of uh, the blogger in this case. We can also search for news articles and editorial features within the Belk Library databases. So from the library's homepage, the blue button on the right, Browse All Databases, we're looking by name under the ends for news stream. So let me scroll, there we go, Newsstream ProQuest. This particular database carries regional newspapers from mid-sized cities like Charlotte, as well as national newspapers, so those out of New York, LA, and DC. As an example search here, I will look for inmate reentry or the reentry of ex-offenders into society after they have done their time. I have a number of results, and so I want to use two filters on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, the first would be the publication date. We are talking about news, so uh, we really don't want to read anything from the 80s. I'll update first to the past decade, and then again to 2017. So this gets me within the past 18 months or so, even that may be a bit much, um, but 60 results is very manageable. I am seeing the most recent first. Uh, I want to know if I am looking at a news article 
or if I'm looking at an editorial feature or if I might be looking at something else. So the other filter that I want to use is the document type. So if I click on this, I see that I have 52 news options and two editorial options. If for my deposit I need a news story, I would click on news. And if this most recent one from June 8th uh, looks interesting based on the title, I can do a quick skim. It is a news article, so it's pretty short, right? Um, I might want to save this to my laptop, but what I really want to point out to you guys is, yeah, the citation feature. So um, in this database, the citation style that comes up first is APA. You are going to want to change that to Chicago 16th edition author date system and clicking on that is not enough. You have to go to the right and actually change into Chicago style. But once you've done this, then you have um, a bibliographic entry that you can copy and paste onto your reference page and then you wouldn't have to worry about this citation anymore. At the very end of the citation, this is your permalink. This is the URL that will get you back to this article in the library's database. So I wish you the best with this searching. Thank you so much for watching this video.